I opened two private radio in Trieste in my life. Yeah? Yeah, I was a DJ as well. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> You've done everything. <laughs> yeah, well, I have, uh, I had really some experience that normally, because I, I like this fact that I throw myself into things. Yeah. So, and I like to learn, so let's do it. So I made two radios. One was completely based on fake things, like fake advertisements. That was so successful that people start to call. When is the next advertisement of that thing <laughs> on the other thing? Because it was comedy, real yeah, yeah. comedy, and then became actually real. And so we started to uh, to get some money from that. Yeah. The second one was more commercial, and mm. it was working. Well, one oh. call was uh, radio uh, quinta dimension, a fifth dimension, and it was the funny one. And the next, the other one was uh, Melody, Melody Radio. Mm. And it was quite good at that time. The radio was getting some, in something 40, 50,000 euro per month of advertisement. Mm. The, the real one. The fake one, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> See, nobody wanted to touch the fake one. No, they wanted, they wanted, but yeah. it was really? so funny. No, not powerful, let's say. <laughs> Fantastic. Sensei, of all the things you've tried and the things you've thrown yourself into why is it martial arts that has had that has stuck the most I never wanted to do it you never wanted to <laughs> no, do martial arts no no i just wanted to to beat everyone oh. <laughs> i i think because my father died when i was very young so and trieste was a very strange place at that time because it was ex yugoslavia uh -huh. And uh, it was there, there, there. So always the Americans' ships were there, kind of protecting Trieste to being in some way uh, inside Yugoslavia. And then they, they call kind of protective zone A and B. You know? So there's a lot of fights and gangs and, yeah. uh, and fights and really in every part of the city. So it's been famous from, for that for a while. So that's, I make a very good experience about that. And uh, so I wanted to beat everyone. And actually I um, kind of, lit now f luckily they've forgotten, but I was a little legend in the, in the city. Yeah. yeah. Are you sure they've forgotten? <laughs> yes, yes. Some, <laughs> majority, yes. Yeah. Majority, I don't know, yes. like when, when we were, I mean, people in case you haven't noticed the lovely Italian voice mm. that you're hearing. We've been ratting and raving about this man for Sensi for a very long time, but we finally got him here, Paolo Balafio Sensi. Paolo Balafio Thank you Sensi, very much welcome to the podcast. Um, it's a pleasure. When we were in Trieste, every five steps, Paolo said, maestro, maestro, yeah. Paolo. <laughs> Everyone knows you in Trieste, you know? Yeah, well, it's, it's useful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's useful because every time, even, I don't know, you order some food or something, you name the gym, you order one pizza, come two. Wow. <laughs> And that's called the, the translation of the concept of mafia. Oh, yeah. really? <laughs> <laughs> the nice part of it. The of nice part. Yeah, the yeah, nice yeah. bit. Yeah, the but perks. actually, mafia, you translate, uh, translation is family. Family. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. But it's mainly on the south. Yes. Yeah. But this kind of, uh, you know, familiar way, you know, that you are in some way, you are attached to people and you try to uh, please, you know, mm. some people. That's normal everywhere in Italy. But you even give back this, no? It's mm -hmm. not that uh, it's yeah. not only one way, you know? Yeah. It's two ways. And it's, it's a good part of it, mm. especially for the pizza part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're, you're over here doing a, a, a seminar in Dublin. How many times have you been here now? This is well, here in Dublin, two. But I've been on the west part of Ireland as well. Yeah. And um, it's been great. I, li I like here. Okay. Yeah. Well, part of the rain of today, but it doesn't matter that. Yeah. Makes, as we said, Ireland green and beautiful, mm -hmm. so it's okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you've obviously, um, you, you've been over teaching for, for Scott Sensi before, mm -hmm. um, and we had a session this morning, and we were talking a little bit about it, but like, c coming to a, a very Shotokan dojo, which, which this is, um, you know, quite a pure Shotokan dojo, what, what kind of, like, how does it make you feel 
on the inside do you think oh i'm kind of you know past this stage of my martial arts journey or do you no well i'm hey, i'm a shotokan as well so i come from there and shotokan is a perfect style so, uh, it looks to me that could be well i don't understand why when you do shotokan i always refer to traditional karate no? mm-hmm. there's not such a thing of traditional karate uh, it's been invented in the 80s uh, i think around 82 83 it's been invented to stop one that invented the sport karate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's been uh, invented to stop from the recognition from IOC. That was the WUKO. was uh, there, there to be recognized. And the president was Jacques Delcourt. He was very happy already with the champagne in Paris, ready to celebrate. And then Nishiyama sensei, uh, Shirai sensei, and I was there when this uh, idea came out. Why would we get, go there and say that we do a different kind of karate? So it's being invented. Mm, yeah. And I went in Switzerland with uh, Nishiyama Sensei, talking to uh, Francois Carrard, that was the secretary of the secretary of the secretary of the secretary. <laughs> <laughs> you see, uh, with, uh, Nishiyama Sensei had already a fight with that guy, so he remained outside. And, and he said, please explain me the thing about the traditional karate. I talked for two hours. And then he said, I don't believe a thing or what you said about the <laughs> traditional karate. But this is exactly what we need to stop. So you invented it, Sensei? Not completely me. <laughs> I, think, I think you just took responsibility. But I was there, when it, we were in an ice cream shop. An ice cream yes, shop? Yes, in uh, Via Friuli in Milan, uh-huh. and talking how to stop uh, the court. No? And we said, why don't we say that we do an, a different kind of karate? And this is true, we, we move in another way, but mm-hmm. it's more kind of tradition. So <laughs> before that, it was just karate. Mm. So I th- what I'm uh, referring about, talking about Shotokan, I think that the research must go on, like mm. the show. So why to stop, no? And why to refer a traditional karate? You can say maybe we refer to a tradition, a Japanese tradition, but we want to go on, to give new motivations, to, uh, to go over it, to... Um, be more, let's say, connected with the, the humans of today. Otherwise, uh, it's, uh, it's no, no, not possible future for that. So I think that uh, it doesn't matter the style. You should think about how to uh, justify the existence of karate in a world of smartphones or extreme fights that nothing have to... Uh, to deal with real karate. Real karate is, is not self-defense, it's defending yourself. So, uh, you are unarmed. If you go in Okinawa, there's maybe uh, they sell legends like, samurai attack me with a sword, I can defend myself. But we do competition only on attacking, because competition cannot be different. So I think that all karate should start to think what to uh, why we are different from MMA from whatever because if you uh, are in a normal fight I always say that because I tried try to fight with a Roman Greek wrestler it's very 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 difficult Mm. so (coughs) that's the point Uh, fighting everyone is strong it doesn't matter which uh, martial art you do everybody Mm. depends from the person but as styles, I think the styles should start to think why and what the motivation to keep going for the next 50, 100 years. And that's the lost meaning of karate. Health and be able to defend yourself. And I like this particular idea very much because it's connected to the world of today. Instead of creating new nuclear bombs stronger and stronger, imagine if we study a system that no bombs can be thrown on, on you. And you are able to switch off any kind of, of bomb or thing that's sent to you, no? Instead of have, I have more tanks than you, no, you have, we are going back to the Cold War of the past. Except that we are facing a revolution right now, no? The world become dividing in two. So in this world, to say about the tradition, sounds to me like um, not enough not enough for future. So we have to find a way that the karate will uh, give uh, even something to the society, no? give back something to society, not only fight fighting. It, <laughs> if you wanna fight now, they shoot you, so what's the point to, <laughs> to, to do uh, a fight? 
first of all, teach to people a kind of correct attitude, no need to fight. Just feel reasons. We can fight for exercise, okay, we can do everything you want, we can study any kind of uh, technique, but we don't fight. We are like a, a sword, very sharp, but we don't use it. That could be some... If you ask me this, the same question 20 years ago, I was not answering like this. But I think that with the self-development inside and you, uh, you have to do that. That's the martial art of the future. Something special. Make better human beings, not fighters. We have enough fighters. We have enough weapons and things. We don't need that. We need someone that cannot be attacked. You cannot attack, either because I have the technique to defend, either because the spirit is ready to create a, a system of not uh, tension between people. So, Shotokan, you said? Mm, mm. I don't see difference in styles. No. No, Shotokan is very good. Gives fantastic basics. But then, yeah, depends how you do it. Basically, you're lucky because you are training in a place of Shotokan with open mind, and you study. Otherwise, I was not here. Mm. So that's the reason why I always accept with enthusiastic uh, invitations from Scott Sensei, because it's an open mind. And uh, that's the real the real deal, having a good mm. master. You said that this morning, and I was yeah. I had a little look at Scott Sensei, and I was like, oh, yeah. we, have a good, we have a good master. <laughs> yeah. Master the doubt himself, it's a real master. Mm. Otherwise, he's an instructor. If you are, oh, no, no, this is the way, yeah, well, you are maybe a good instructor, but you know, if you don't doubt yourself, you don't, if you think you're, no, this is the way, you, you, you. I don't know if we have a good word for that in the English language. A master is there, but we don't use the word master. Ma the word master means somebody generally who has mastered a craft or an art or mm -hmm. a subject. It's the same. Or, or but not, we or don't or really use it as a teacher. Or yeah, or yeah, somebody who owns you yeah. somehow. Mm -hmm. yeah. But maestro in Japanese, um, in uh, Italian, that's the, in, in, at home they call you maestro. Yeah, and we have this word in, uh, even in uh, official uh, language. We have uh, three, uh, actually four levels in the um, technical department. We have uh, allenatore, which means trainer. Mm -hmm. And the trainer has to follow indication from an instructor. We have instructor, uh, which follows uh, federation programs. We have uh, advanced instructor, which can be uh, after some years of uh, experience in instructor. And maestro, which mm -hmm. is um, uh, sensei, or a sensei is actually instructor, but so maestro, uh, f for example, uh, we have minimum degree for maestro is fifth dan. Mm. Other federation have three, third dan, four dan, it depends. But for me, because um, the university, di uh, let's say diploma or degree for karate is the fifth dan, uh, apparently. You've done uh, all the technical uh, work possible on fifth dan. Or at least you had you had the time to do it, but then if you didn't do it or not, well, that's mm -hmm. not a problem. But mm -hmm. the time is long enough to study almost everything. So after that, you can be a maestro. Before it's ridiculous you know, because you know, it's like you have a, um, a doctorate, but you haven't you haven't finished university. So how how is possible that after uh, you you didn't finish and you you are a doctor? So yeah. not yet, no. So maestro is like that. And um, it's quite, well, yeah, I know that master doesn't have the same meaning, but in some way, maestro, it's a master of the art. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, anyway, mm -hmm. art. We have maestro di musica, which is master, let's say, maestro of music or any other art, or maestro that made paintings and things like that. Yeah, same, same, uh, same idea. That's why you all use very often, oh, sensei or shihan or things like that. The yeah. words, when we use the Japanese word sensei, like we know that it, it the, the translation is one who has lived before or somebody who has had a life. So mm. it's, a, it's, it's a role model and not just a teacher. Mm. Oh, a role model maybe is taking it a bit too far, but at least the word is imbued with that sense. Yeah. Um, we just call ourselves instructors. Mm. We yeah. don't. 
we don't force anybody to call us sensei. Some of our students do, some of our students don't. Well, on the do on the dojo, like sensei, just in terms of etiquette and stuff. Yes. you know, Ru sensei, mm. Ross sensei. But oh, when we talk to uh, one another, yeah, 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 or, or yeah. In, in the dojo. But yeah, we're we're not really we're not really too fussed about all that labeling. Yeah, you know. Yeah, maybe we should go with maestro. When I was in college, I I want to be maestro. That sounds so much better. Well, you have to get your fifth down. Maestro. (laughs) That sounds good. When I was in college, I was in uh, music groups. I was in a choir, a couple of choirs, and uh, we spoke to our director and addressed him by his first name. Mm -hmm. But the other um, staff of the, the faculty of the university would call them maestro mm-hmm. because we borrow a lot of Italian terms in music mm-hmm. like all the, the terms when you're reading music are Italian so. Yeah. yeah so you you were JKA mm-hmm. when you started out and um, at what point did your training start to diverge from the traditional <laughs> Shotan <laughs> karate well at uh, one point um, should I say I went out of JKA uh, let's say at that time I was uh, the vice president of the Insti- Italian Institute for Shotokan. It's called Istituto Shotokan Italia. It's called, uh, and that was the highest Shotokan, uh, let's say, academy in Italy. And they asked me, I had this honor to be the vice president, to take care of the president, protect him, uh, give uh, advice and things. I was quite often with Shirai Sensei as well. But then he left uh, JKA for his reason, doesn't matter. And um, uh, he asked me to remain, but you stay, stay in JK. So I, I had this uh, double, let's say, um, duty, you know, to stay and report in some way. It was, but that's their problem, it's a, a typical Japanese problem, not mm. our problem. And at one point, I was, uh, I, it's been almost my, uh, my life was really, Terrible. No one weekend free, always going here. And uh, at one point I said, Sensei, I, I can't do it anymore because I've been not even home for Christmas. So I can't. No, it's something that uh, mentally I cannot do it anymore. And he said, Man, no, I stay. I've been there three days. And he tried in all ways to say, No, don't go, don't go, don't go. So I have to. I have to uh, step out. And plus, all my friends in Italy, let's say those that were in a national team and we were close friends. They start to hate me a little bit because I had so much uh, important, let's say, duties and so a close relationship with all the Japanese, like Kaze Sensei and uh, Nishiyama Sensei or uh, Inoeda Sensei, same as well, that everybody was jealous. No? So I start to lose friends. Mm. So I decided to step up, out. No? And the last bit was when I went to uh, Japan for training. I paid a lot of money to train a week in Tokyo. And then I found myself teaching a week in Tokyo because everybody was in vacation. At the JKA headquarters? <laughs> yes. Oh my God. <laughs> so, I said, so I said, you know what? Enough. Wow. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then I started to study my, my own things. And at that time I already started the, the Chinese martial arts from years and I was really busy thinking how to, you know, make those things, let's say, place it all together. And then came Makoto Kai. But Makoto Kai, as I always say, it's a, it's not a style, it's a system. Uh, it's being recognized as the style for the characteristic of research from a, um, a friend, let's say, you know, that is a head of Butoku Kan, which is a very important uh, school over there. And then became a style, I say, okay, but it's not a style, you know, we have the same fundamentals of Shotokan, the same uh, system, the, as I said in the morning, remember the Heian Shodan is first, and then come the others, and then we have other kata, of course, that are in some way uh, construct a more flowing feeling of the technique, because the problem is very often people are over rigid. That's not good for health. Mm-hmm. But so it's all, well, uh, I could say coincidence, but you remember the uh, the turtle master of, of Kung Fu Panda say there's no such a thing as coincidence. <laughs> so let's say. It's Master Shifu, Spe- I believe his yeah, name yeah. was. No, 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 Shifu. the turtle, the, the turtle. Ugwe. Ugwe, Ugwe, Ugwe. 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 correct, Ugwe. correct. <laughs> Speaking of coincidence, this story, um, mm. you, I've, I heard it for the second time. Oh, great story. Um, 
last night, but the, the story of, of finding your your shifu that, that, that you, again you've told us this before but for mm. the people it's such a great story well we make it short because otherwise <laughs> well i was in um i was training in uh, shanghai with uh, one one of my two let's say shifu with gumei shen uh, a very important master recognized from everyone we had very good young uh, tai chi style and um i was asking but i don't even know why i asked but uh, who the best? No, I said Sifu was the best master because they there's been a lot of troubles when it was the, the the revolution, the popular revolution. And he said, well, the majority went away, United States, Canada, Australia, they they went away, they escaped. And he wrote on a post-it, just I think he was exercising actually his calligraphy. I don't know why. And he wrote uh, five names, and uh, you know how things happen at. I always remember the first, the one that you went, you opened the post it, mm-hmm. you see. Oh, this was Master Ho. And uh, and then, that's it, forget about that. Back to Trieste in Italy, a friend of mine asked, you like to come in Australia sailing? I said, well, let's go. So we took get a sailboat and uh, made this adventure with an Australian guy that came from Australia through the Red Sea and the Indian Ocean with uh, three... Australian guys and the Australian guys went back to Australia. He remained there because he actually uh, born in Trieste, mm. so he was missing the city for many years. Of a nice boat, a fourteen meters boat, very nice. And and, I, and then he wanted an equipage, you no, know, a team to go back from a team from Trieste to go back to Australia for a longer trip, you no, know, Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean. Mm-hmm. So we did it in nine and a half months. Many times along the way, we said, why don't we stop here? It's <laughs> <laughs> in paradise. <laughs> paradise. And when I arrived there, you can imagine, you know, in Melbourne, some parties, people, happiness. Went to many uh, Italian uh, clubs, talking about the adventure, and being invited everywhere. And then they, they learn, oh, you know, you do martial arts. Ah, you have to go. You just, where are you living? Well, I'm living in uh, Rose Street, which is... Uh, um, Armadale, close to uh, South Yarra Park in Melbourne. I said, if you go to the South Yarra Park and in the morning, it's full of people doing martial arts, really. So I went there, it was 5 a.m. I arrived there, I said, gosh, this is a, an army of people. It was full. Different groups, um, leaders from uh, different people, doing different things. Uh, I sit on a bench, I was, oh, yo, yo. <laughs> Where's the popcorn? So I, <laughs> no. and I stay there and I really enjoy, you know, almost every day for one week. And I noticed that there was uh, sometimes, the, the, let's say, the teacher of the groups were walking far away from my position. I noticed one guy under a big tree, they bow many times and are asking probably something. Then I learned this after, of course, you know, and, and went back. So I said, that must be the teacher, the chief. Mm-hmm. So I made a long round around the park <laughs> and coming from the other side and um, uh, tried to undercover myself behind bushes and, uh, <laughs> and, things, uh, and copy what he was doing, try to make some moves. I, I think it was quite ridiculous that, but i never forget. And then, he, of course, he spotted me, not immediately, but after a little while and said, what do you want? Screaming at me. So come here. So I want to learn. No, no, no. Go away. Go away. Go away. And this, I move a few meters. Other bush. <laughs> <laughs> Try to cop. So he was. I was very annoying. And, and this was going for a few days. And I think three or four days. Yeah. Three or four days. Yeah. And then one day he was very upset. I said, "Come here." I said, "Who are you?" Said, ah, my name is Paolo. Ah. What are you what are you doing here? Well, where you come from? I come from Italy. Ah. Ah, I came with a sailboat. What? And he's laughed there. You know. Ha ha ha! A sailboat? Why you come from a sailboat? <laughs> Why don't you use another system? Well, whatever. And he was very hard, let's say, and laugh on my face. And what are you doing? And that time, the first mistake was that I do I did, I do some karate. Oh, karate! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to can imagine, <laughs> and, but then no, no, no. But I did even some tai chi, you know, with G- Master Gumei Sheng. Ah, Gumei Sheng, he knew him. No, mm. I said, "How's him? 
Ah, he's good. I seen him last year. Yes, because you came by sable. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of little things I like. <laughs> but I, I don't, cannot teach you. Cannot teach you. Go away. I don't get students. And before going away, because I'm really curious about this, uh, because I always have this post-it with me mm. in my. I still have it at home in my wallet. No, came into my mind to ask him if he knew, and I was remember only the first name, of course. Mm -hmm. He said, excuse me, Sifu, what do you want? Uh, do you know perhaps uh, uh, where Master Ho is living? And then he stopped her. Why do you want to know this? Because uh, Gumai Shen Sifu uh, talked me about this uh, special uh, master and uh, I would like to know, no? Ah, I said, he was changing a little bit attitude. You come in by sailboat? Yes. You search for Master Ho? Yes. I am Master Ho. And, he, and he, then he look at I look at him, very serious. I come tomorrow morning at five, and that was the beginning of a nightmare. A nightmare. Yes, 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 yes. yes. I've been beaten in every possible way. Really? Oh, you, you, you. To learn Tai Chi. <laughs> tai Chi. No, Pakwa. Oh, Pakwa. But even Tai Chi. Don't don't think oh. that Tai Chi is a, that a very slow thing. And do you beat all the old ladies in your dojo, Sensei? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> you can do that. Except his mum. Mum still beats no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Our mum is untouchable. Like, yeah. <laughs> like the movie. But in the mouth, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, that was very was quite funny. But I got so many lessons mm. from him. I Sometimes they ask me, when my brother asks me, why don't you write down, we make a book, a movie, or whatever. I was like, I don't know. This is very private stuff. Yeah, I can't too, do it. Too special, almost. There's yeah. a movie called The Empire Strikes Back, <laughs> where somebody Similar. lands on a on a mm -hmm. strange planet and meets mm -hmm. their teacher. It's a lot <laughs> like that. <laughs> Similar. Similar. This was uh, 1980. So Empire Strikes Back, I believe, was 1984. <sighs> or maybe that was 88. Was the championship? Uh, yeah, 81. 81. Okay. Mm -hmm. George Lucas was probably watching. Going. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he was there learning Tai Chi. Like, yeah. who the hell is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Lucas, actually, we were at Dresden, and uh, since you do a lot of um, sword mm -hmm. training, mm. I remember going into Sensei's office. Oh yeah, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're showing us all the, the Chinese Dao swords and the yeah, big swords, and, uh, swords. All, all these swords. And he's the, like, the most important swords, and he pulls out <laughs> shoo, two lightsabers. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, that's for the kids. You but, can learn everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, all martial arts come from weapons. That's a, that's a fact. The empty hand martial art comes from defending from the weapons, uh, which uh, it's a good point even to think about. No, uh, if you go far in a Chinese tradition, as I always say, for example, Nechia, it's a sword, straight sword called Jian. And from Nietzsche comes Tai Chi, so uh, you can say in some way that Tai Chi comes from the sword, in some way. And uh, what happened in the past, that you fighting, what about if you lose your sword? And the other one, no. So you have to defend yourself against the other sword, until you get another sword. So let's say that offensive techniques are with weapons. Defending techniques are without weapons, but against weapons sometimes. So this is a little bit is uh, the origin of all our martial arts because mm. empty hand martial art, it's something quite modern, not old. In the past, they used the same technique with the sword, even without the sword or whatever, the broadsword or the spear or whatever. You use the same techniques. Mm. Actually, Pakwa, if you remember, you've seen it in Trieste. Pakwa is that giant broadsword, if you remember. Mm. Yeah. It's a huge yeah. one. Yeah. That's a big one. Mm. Because Pakwa used gravity force, centrifugal force, and triple force, you know, so use different kind of moving, you know. So, but they all come from source. They don't. They, they never invented something for health. Well, in some way, yes, because you're still alive after yeah. that. But <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, it was healthy to to make a, to make a, some martial art, but never for feeling better or relieve the stress. <laughs> Actually, yeah. the opposite. It's like in Japan, if you own a sword. Uh, it's like now if you, you own a, an apartment, a big apartment, mm. the people try to steal it. You know, the samurai was no, no money, only the sword and the ability. But if you have a sword, you're going to be challenged. 
that was the same even in China. But China has um, uh, an unbelievable tradition that actually they try to cancel, but to erase an unbelievable tradition of, uh, let's say, expendables, no? People that can, you can hire for uh, any kind of... Mercenaries. Uh, yeah, mercenaries, exactly. And uh, in Japan, not so much. It was the running, no? The running yeah, idea, yeah. but uh, they were kind of uh, infamous in some way. Uh -huh. you know? Or the ninja, let's say, uh, assassins, but which were even in Japan, in, sorry, in China, were the same concept, the ninjas. Different, but similar. So our tradition, if you want to look to a tradition, it's uh, centuries and centuries and centuries and come from real fights. That's why it actually makes me laugh when they ask you, can you defend against a knife? Actually, no, we can defend against a sword, but against a knife, no. <laughs> <laughs> because people laugh, like you did now, but the reason is that the knife is for the fruit. <laughs> <laughs> to peel the fruit, apparently. But now we lost this, no? Mm. When we enter in a fight, we always think, what are we going to lose? No? Only, the only people that can fight is those that they don't have anything to lose. So they are very aggressive. So you, you need a very special defending technique. Not self-defense, ability of defending. That's why our kata starts with the defending technique. And that's why karate is tenashi. So it's not a way of attacking, but defending. You should uh, think about that and then elaborate something new for the future to give sense. Like I said before, much better to be the one that no one can attack because they know already that <laughs> it's pointless. And karate like that could be, you throw me a punch, I break your punch. You throw me a kick, you lost one foot. So you don't attack anymore. That could represent a way of thinking. But then you really have, don't have competitions. Because the, to make competitions, we need we needed in the past to make a point. Mm -hmm. A point with a block. You, we tried in Italy. Eh? We tried to make a competition of defending. You attack for one minute, I attack for one minute, and then we decide who was the best. Mm. But it didn't really work out because you need a very high level of karate to do something like that. Yeah. It just gets messy. It, it was quite too funny to see. <laughs> too funny. <laughs> yes, but it was an experimental one, of course. Uh -huh. but yeah. They said, no, 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 this is too funny. Sorry. <laughs> did, you, did you get through like multiple rounds or was it just yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> no no we made it we made uh, with everything the medals the cup and so it was an experimental mm. defending cup mm -hmm. that was quite many years ago no way no, no. way no. Com competition must be based on something yeah you do the kata okay based on artistic interpretation of uh, that move those movements the committee <laughs> And you know very well, when you do a seminar, comes, I don't know, 50 people. You do a competition, 500 people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So still people like compet competition and be competitive. This is uh, something to think about. Aikido, they don't have the practice of the, the competition, they don't practice competition. There's a big fight in Japan between Kenjutsu and Kendo. This I can testify because my friend is a Kenjutsu. They don't like it. But in the same time, they practice kind of Kendo. Uh, but they don't compete. So there's a lot of uh, things to, that can be changed mm. for future. You mentioned there like a, a competition, kata, artistic interpretation. But you were talking to us this morning about kata being a, a story. Mm -hmm. well, what, what do you mean by kata being a story? Just... It's not my uh, my idea. It comes from a uh, Chinese idea. Oh, there are some formula. If you remember, I don't know if you have never seen you know Eda Sensei yeah. doing the singing kata. Mm. That's, uh, I remember, opinion of where well, the young people don't understand or they thought it was some kind of... But Sensei, was he singing while he did yeah, the yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah, no, yeah. I haven't seen that. Yeah, uh, seen that. No. Very often he was doing even with a bass, no, a, a song, yes, and doing yes. the kata. But I even seen his singing. No? Uh, together with the song, 
No, he was in doing that. No, and I learned that, and it was interesting. Then I found out that in China is the same. I give you an example. Uh, in karate, we have I don't know, girambarai, uh, oizuki. Uh, okay, so the name of the single techniques. In, uh, for example, in Tai Chi, you have the name of the single techniques, the name of principles that dominate that single techniques, which we don't have, but actually we have, but we don't use it. Mm-hmm and nobody knows even about it. And we have the name of the section. Imagine a Yanshona, okay? Gidambarai Oizuki, and then you have the big rotation, Gidambarai Tetsui Oizuki. Give a name to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's difficult because we didn't invent it. Part one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> First five me. moves. I, I do with the kids, I break it down into levels. There's yeah. levels that they have to complete yeah. to help them remember it. Yeah. Well, in, in China exists a, a form that you're doing and, and singing and you're acting. And uh, to give the opposite example, I've seen ability of Heian Shodan, like I, we said already, in Goju Shi Hosho. So if I move the same in Goju Shi Hosho and Heian Shodan, what's the point to make a Goju Shi Hosho? So, what is the secret behind Goju Shi Ho Sho? It does, the kata doesn't deserve a different way of moving. Why all the kata move in the same way, just different list of techniques? Instead, This is a lack of interpretation and the lack of study in uh, depth in the kata. Because every high level kata, we have three levels of kata, basic kata, intermediate, advanced. The advanced must have inside something, and they do have. Some kata never perform in, the, in competition. See how many chinte you see in it. Mm. Very few. Mm. Difficult. In Italy, you can't see goju shodai because the, that thingy, the kakuto <laughs> technique, <laughs> yeah. in Italy means, what do you want? <laughs> yeah. so, no one except uh, Dario Marchini was doing that. And it was everybody, all the other Italians, that said, <laughs> don't do that, please. Don't do it anymore. And no one can give an explanation. I can give it. Nei Guan, connection of the meridian, this ancient medicine. Even in Japan, they use the same. Not with uh, acupuncture, no, a more stabbing puncture <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because of the character. Yeah. Just joking, of course, but they have similar things. So we should recuperate something in the kata and we should study something. When you do a kata in, the, in front of people, you should acting. It's an act, action of acting. It's not just repeating techniques. So when when you're performing kata for your own practice, um, each like so you would see maybe some a uh, sensei having their own style, the the way that they like to move, and they move that way in their karate with every kata. You personally try and perform every kata different, like uniquely, like every single time. Like, or are you still applying the same movement? Uh, that was the, an inter- it's an interesting question because um, the, that is a question to yourself. Mm-hmm. Am I able to rewrite in some way the script or to ma- I have to give my interpretation or I'm not allowed to make the interpretation? This is why actually I started uh, Makoto Kai. I, I asked them, when I was doing the study, I, I asked to Shirai Sensei. And I said, well, your dojo is called Makoto, call it Makoto Kai. It's your, your study. Ah, I said, oh, okay, nice. Why not? But it never meant to be a study. I come from Shotokan. Uh, okay, the only difference Makoto Kai has is um, different kihon and different kata plus. You know, and the kata is very based on uh, uh, principles and acting. There are some. And you have to, and some kata really are difficult to do it in uh, in a square of uh, competition because they're too long. There, there's one kata has 10 kiai. So. Why did you decide to make such a long kata? I didn't decide. I start to study and I said, well, here it would be good if I do even this. And then you find yourself, well, this is too long. <laughs> no, <laughs> this is, not, this is a, it's a kind of study for me, but not for, no. Uh, sometimes people use even the kata for uh, training, like uh, let's make uh, 50 NP one by one. Uh-huh. Yeah. No. 
why you do that instead of doing one? It's the same same kind of question. I want to feel, I want the kata giving back some pain. I don't know, something like that. That every kind of research like this is good. I think it's good. Uh, competition, it's okay. Some uh, top performers, you see, they express something. Mm. But then you see some uh, fundamental mistakes. And then even if you are, it's like you are a good, uh, I don't know, you race, you making the Hamlet, no? and instead you have, I don't know, the skull uh, in the, your hand, you have, a, I don't know, a pom grenade. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. You, you can't do a rock melon. So it's yeah. ridiculous. You can't do that. You have to be uh, on the script. Mm. Let's say. That's why uh, I decided to make some experimental thing. Makoto Kaikata was never meant to be in competition. Mm. It's a study, no? It's just study. There's one kata, for example, that is some regular point. Must you must be attacked from uh, outside and you have to show that you your kata doesn't change because it's the attack not the oh, oh, uh, being surprised a little bit from the attack uh, put yourself in trouble like that i, I remember once with the shirai sensei in uh, it was the european championship many years ago in belgrade i remember that he uh, in the changing room it was four of us uh, meant to go inside, do some kimevaza with him, uh, attacking. And I remember he told me, uh, attack me with, I don't know, uh, Kizamizuki Jakuzuki, and then my gate, and then, because I was good with legs, uh, I don't know, Uramawashi gate, thing. Okay, and the other, do this, do this, do this, but like briefly, like this, mm -hmm. let's go. He went inside, that time karate was very, you know, something special. And it was there, I don't know, 15,000 people looking, huge, and I was, Young and oh yo yo, in fact, and then in front of me it was my uh, dear friend, like a brother, very one of the best Italian karate guy, which uh, Maurizio Marangoni, and I was there and said, um, I forgot. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I, forgot. I forgot what I had to attack you, and he said, Me too. Oh, no. <laughs> said, so what? You just attack. <laughs> So we did, it was a beautiful demonstration. Back to the, to the changing room, and start to switch. And then he very suddenly said, at least one that was there did what I said. <laughs> no one of you did it. You all messed it up. <laughs> and, then, and then I thought, if one day I can have that level, mm. I will be happy. So he did it just that. So and then I, I realized that and I started to do that. So it happened to me a good demonstration. I go inside. There is some video as well. No, I said, okay, you attack. Just don't worry. I do it. Or another one or two. I remember once that uh, you know that in theater you have the l white light <laughs> spotlight. Yeah, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. the spotlight. And I was the rest was pitch black. Mm. And I, there was two guys dressed like ninja in black. So now I was doing a kata and they're supposed to attack me anytime. And I, w I remember I was thinking, I'm in trouble because I can't see a bloody thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, and then, so it went luckily well, mm -hmm. but that was something, even that, no preparation, nothing. So it's one of the things that I was doing for myself is going there, put yourself in trouble, no preparation, see how you can come out. In front of an audience. In front of an audience. <laughs> so you have the pressure, no? Yeah. And that's that's good. Yeah. That's something good. So I think that this part of karate we should study more. Not the demonstration, I mean. This uh, challenging yourself in a more artistic way. Mm. No? So like, uh, when we were in Trieste, we we learned the kata again 10. Mm -hmm. I say learn. We, we were shown it and copied it. <laughs> try it the best we could but uh, we were given instruction by yourself we were given instruction by Fulvio Sensi mm -hmm. and Emiliano Sensi and Fulvio Sensi and Emiliano Sensi completely different oh yes, yes completely yes. different and then yourself also completely different do you encourage like with your own instructors with your own students a bit more individuality like you it, see now karate is very baseline cause i think because of tournaments mm -hmm. standardized everyone has to move the same way yeah what you have seen uh you seen different maybe movements a principle must be the same mm. so you can uh, do some adjustments in the movement but principle cannot be adjust 
So if you follow the right principles, mm, then it's okay. So in, always I said, okay, uh, what it, ma- this end must be closed, must be open. How I doesn't matter, open or closed doesn't matter, but must be here, or maybe on your side, not uh, in another place. Mm. Close or open, that doesn't change. And uh, everyone has, um, let's say, little different abilities on the principles. No, so you have, you see, you made a scale. You know? The first one, the younger one, has less ability in the principles, then a little bit more on higher going to Fulvio, and then it's me that actually I teach them. So uh, you can enjoy that difference if you can see it. Yeah. You, know? you see the difference, you enjoy it, you know, because I see. The principle is there, but the technique is different. Yeah, and that, that, that was it. Just what, and trying to watch videos of other people, you know, when you're in that that are with Makoto Kai doing it online and stuff. Everyone has that. It's a little bit different, but again, mm-hmm. like you say, principles and fundamentals you can see are more or less the same. You know, again, to different to different levels, but um, yeah, mostly. The, yeah, mostly well, the same. That's, uh, yeah, it's raining. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, but it's that. that yeah. that's, that's true. That's real. Important is that you are able to uh, see, use, feel the principle. Now, probably everybody's very curious about what the principles are. You well, have to come and find out. You have to come train. <laughs> do the that's work. true. That's true. <laughs> but the first for sure is uh, routine, axis, and waves. That is how the human body works. Routing the rules of routine, for example, remember breathing and everything, all those things, they affect the root down. A root must be when you use force. And fluid, you must be when you move. So that's why it's connected with breathing. So all these principles must be there. You know, axis, okay, but not rigid. Use of the chest. You know, in Chinese, they call it sanjen, three engines. The upper part, Let's say the two arms, that's the, th- remember the thingy about the punch and that, mm. that's the first engine. Torso is the second engine, legs the third engine. Harmony between the three, it's important. So you have to study those three parts. And you can see one that do the Genten, for example, you can see him, he digests well the first engine, but he doesn't know how to use the second one. And the other one here, yeah, he has the first, and the third, so top and low, but the center is not good yet. And so you can see that different levels, not only in uh, just the Yokogeri different or something, but the use of body in a different way. Yeah. It's pointless not to know how to use the body. Pointless. So then again, we go back to the fact that very often, Goju Shiosho or Yan Shodan saying, just move similar. If you get the Fifth dan doing goju shio sho and then at the yan sho dan you see almost there there because their rotation 270 degrees there's no uh, uh, let's say a nice spiritual movement when you move slow there's not that zanshin that you express when you move slow sideways on goju shio sho techniques uh, the slow part of technique you have to act really well no and then even if you do a Gion, you see the people say, just one second, let's go again. No, Slow is scary. And uh, so, Hangetsu, that is slow, no? difficult to make any interpretation. That's why you don't see in competition. Mm. It's kind of forbidden, don't do it. Or Teki, who wants to do Teki in competition? Nobody, because it's difficult, very difficult, and at the same time, so easy. Mm. People think, but it's not easy no. at all. I think Yan Shodan's one of the hardest cats ever. Ah. Like, say, like again, like one one thing that Scott Sensi always says to us is, is again similar, like similar but different to what you're saying is, uh, don't do Yan Shodan like an orange belt. Mm-hmm. Don't do it like a beginner. You have to perform Yan Shodan like your grade, like your level. So you're trying to, you know, pull more out of the kata mm-hmm. every time that you do it, and it becomes incredibly difficult. Oh yeah. And, and I have a saying that in Italian sounds like this: "Voi bocciare un quinto dan, fagli fare e yan shodan." And the translation is: "You want to refuse a fifth dan, make him do it a yan shodan." It's true. Yeah, yeah. Because they have to show something else. Yeah. 
I'll show you your experience. That's the, um, the point of the famous ten no kata, no, which is very basic and say, well, yeah, it's very basic, but you have to do in a different, let's say, way, ten no kata, which basically it's like uh, standing or moving step forward, step back. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. And that's interesting. Kaze Sensei was unbelievable. <laughs> But people don't even, if you're not ready to see one uh, level like that, you don't even understand that level. So you think, oh, who was that fat man doing? Oh, <laughs> well, don't challenge that fat man because. Kazi <laughs> <laughs> Sensei was unbelievable. I assist him many times in the seminars. What was special about Kazi Sensei? Well, he was uh, like a grandfather. Mm. For me, he was fabulous. I remember one day we were in Tuscany teaching between Lucca and um, Montecatini, which are not far, so two different cities. So it was some a thousand people. Imagine a seminar with a thousand people. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. JKA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. crazy. Uh, it was a week, so. And we were moving, teaching here, teaching there. And I remember I, I said to Cousin, say, I said, say, that thing that you showed today. I understood, but Monday I do it good, Tuesday it's not coming, Thursday or Wednesday it's coming back again. It's a bit difficult. I, so I know, I know, Paolo, but you know, Thursday I can do it, Friday sometimes I can't do it. And Saturday <laughs> I can, so. Scott Sensei would never admit to that. <laughs> never, never. Uh, uh, he would say, oh, oh so I say, thank you, Sensei. No, no, it's true. I, said, well, I have so many, so many of this. Oh, yo, yo, with him was. I remember once he, I was uh, doing the uke no, in, a, in, in a course, and he made a shirogiri. And he was unbelievable good with the legs, ex but only chudan, sometimes gedan. <laughs> but very fast, very unbelievable. Even with a throw and takedown, no things. But I remember shirogiri hits my arm on the forearm, mm. and the arm went on my hip, but there was no pain. Mm. But the day after, in the morning, I had a blue hip. <laughs> the hip was blue? The hip was not the arm. Wow. So I said, what the hell is strange with my hip today? <laughs> and then I was in the blue fire. I said, I didn't get any. Oh, and I said, yes, I had one. And I said to him, to cousin, say, he was a very funny guy. I remember, he, he never slept on, on bed. He slept on the floor? On the corner. What? With a couple of cushions on the corner there. Yeah, remember because uh, on this kind of seminars, I was uh, I've been sent many times to uh, cousins and say room around three a.m., two a.m. They never sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it was an unbelievable uh, experience that to deal with them. Yeah, uh, I said today. You now we were looking the 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 v VHS of the music festival with them all night. And in the morning seminar with a lot of people, I was destroyed from the night white, ah, like that. Mm -hmm. And they were perfect, absolutely perfect, fresh, happy. So how can they do it? Very good actors, I think. Absolutely. I but, but, <laughs> it's like being Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but, but thinking that I, I learned, I understood that then, because they see the thing on, uh, let's say, all together. You don't see, I'm tired, I can't do it. No, it's that uh, we have a beautiful night having a lot of ice cream and uh, look in the movies, look in the, the festival of music and Japanese and happy singing in the morning seminar. How can you be tired? Well, it's right if you think in that way. No, the kind of uh, overlook of the whole thing together. Yeah. So, and, nice. and then they are very good actors anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Very good. That's true. Rowan, what's that, what time are we uh, We're at Everybody. six o'clock. Uh, yes. Six. Let me just see how long we've been. Yeah, we've been taken away for about an hour. An hour, yeah. So um, we don't want to keep Sensei no, too long. We don't want to keep him too long. We could talk. We could talk to you for hours. We've <laughs> mentioned we you, Sensei, on I think every episode of this podcast <laughs> really? because we, really? we start arguing about karate and it'll be well remember Paolo Sensei <laughs> said <laughs> but, but then he also said <laughs> no uh, we we always talk about uh, I have a, a a very much a love hate thing with Shotokan at mm -hmm. the moment where I, I feel constrained by it a lot of the time and then at times I fall in love with it again and then I feel constrained and I fall so like 
I, I always have that kind of, oh, I, I wish I had the freedom just to do whatever I want, but then I'm confined to having to teach yeah, yeah. students and they have to know hmm. a, a universal sort of, like Scott says, he says it's a universal language that we all speak, Shotokan, the Shotokan system. Mm -hmm. So they have to learn, you know, these set techniques, these set cats, and it has to be to some extent standardized so it can translate across the organization and stuff. It's it's tricky, you mm -hmm. know, because at times I, I don't want to do it. Well, you know, uh, talking about a little fast about the structure of Makoto Kai, we have two con totally different groups of techniques. But anyway, we start with what uh, what I call Oyamanaru, which means uh, system of the mountain, you know, solid and the structure. That's very important, gives you structure. That's the fundamental of Shotokan, has a perfect idea of that. Apart of the fact that some make some mistakes, but apart of that, apart of the mistakes, the idea is give structure and it's good. Then you use this structure and perfection in the kata. And then you use the structure and perfection of the kata and the acting, the, the showing of the kata, using in life. In Kumite, you don't need all that, of course. Because uh, you, can, you can fight in any way you want, basically. If you do traditional karate, not much. If you do sport karate, you're a bit m more free. If you do a counter karate, what's important that you're standing in the end of the fight. So, up to you. No? Fighting is a different story. But the best thing of karate is in uh, fundamentals and uh, study of fundamentals. Kata, that is something that you cannot be re reply, can be not be substituted with anything else. As I said in Makoto, we have the Oyamanaru and the Kochonaru. Kochonaru is like um, butterfly, butterfly system. You learn how to be smooth and uh, to move in a different way. There's no kata of that. Uh, you can't have it because they are, uh, the moving in that way is more circular and to make a kata circular it's pointless it's better that you study fundamentals way of moving exercise in pair there's so many exercises in pair tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to see that uh, and you can get um, a good fighter out of anyone hmm. but there's a danger there's a danger when you do the Kochonaru. They think it's easy. It's not easy because you need other principles there as well. That you cannot do it in a Oyamanaru system because it's a, a normal structure, let's say, or structural karate. The Kochonaru has different rules, but kata are impossible for that. So what is important is first you have a structure and then you can do whatever you want. Of course, uh, teaching all the time the same thing is boring anyway, either if you do one thing or the other thing. And it's normal for a, an instructor that sometimes he feels, okay, I do it, sometimes feel, oh, I'm a bit frustrated. This is a symptom of growing. It's nothing worse, nothing bad with that. So be happy, that's a correct, that's a correct way. Mm. I feel the same when I do. The important thing is to teach you with your heart and you teach what you see in your own true judgment that people in front of you need. And you teach that with the best attitude you can. That's important. And uh, never be uh, the sensei. No, that's important as well. Because we have already egomaniacs around the world, too many, so don't, don't join the group. <laughs> but, uh, no. And never define too much yourself. Well, I, it's very funny that I say this because of Makoto Kai, but I, <laughs> I didn't do it. Someone else did it. Mm. But for me, it's always the same. It's Shotokan, it's uh, uh, plus something else. If you ask me what's the best system of Kumite, I can answer very easily. None or all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I like fighting. Uh, okay, I'm sorry for you. But <laughs> <laughs> see a doctor. <laughs> no. Normally, those Shrink. have some. Yeah, they have some problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not joking. They have some, yeah. Maybe some father problem. I don't know. Some missing father. I don't know. I want to be beaten. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. I feel like you deserve it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It is. It's like that. Oh, well, Sensei, this has been fabulous. 
We better do a fail. We better do a fail of the week. Oh, it's time for a fail of the week. (laughs) Oh, Oh, well, I've got one. Go on. I was just thinking when Paolo Sensei says, you know, don't be an egomaniac. It's good. It's a good thing I'm not an egomaniac because I was made a fool of in front of a lot of people last weekend um, by Ross Sensei. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I was doing was Ross funny. Sensei and I were invited we were invited to the west of Ireland huh? to teach a course and do a grading at Keelan Sensei's dojo HDKI mm-hmm. Sligo really lovely part of the country and a lovely group of people and there were about 50 of them all yeah. warming up everybody doing jumping jacks and so we're all we're all over in the Sensei's corner stretching a bit and talking uh-huh. and laughing and ah, da 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 and um and Ross and I start bouncing on the balls of our feet. And I was like, oh, oh, are we fighting? What's going on? And I said, okay, okay, taekwondo. So I put my hands down by my side. And Ross and I put his hands down by his side. And I decided to try an Ushiro Mawashi Gary at the very oh, exact moment that Ross and I decided to do an Ushiro Gary. And he kicked oh. me right in the back. <laughs> and I went flying. Ah! Boom! <laughs> Hit the floor in front of everybody. Very ungraceful as well. Very, Arms failing. Yeah. Funny noises. <laughs> Very ungraceful. I look Very like a baby giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> it was good fun because uh, yeah. it was great because everyone got to see it. Which was everyone got to see it, yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes I had one as well. Yeah? Yeah, I was in Norway last uh, weekend. And uh, I went to uh, a friend's house to have dinner. And when I went, it was uh, normal. And when I went out, it was three, four centimeters of snow. Mm. So, but luckily no one seen that. <laughs> I went out and said, wow, snow, zoom, zoom. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to forget that, but now you remember. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> my my feels a little bit more unpleasant. My my, uh, I was teaching uh, the kids this week, um, kids in Irish town. Mm-hmm. It was a very small class. The beginners class there is is quite small, and uh, the kids are about five years old. And one of them, uh, you know, his his belts come undone, and I'm going over and I'm tying his belt, and I'm you know I'm messing about, and I'm saying, oh, does it go on your head? Oh no, no, classic. No, 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 yeah. Tie around the arms, oh, no, mm-hmm. no. and I'm doing finally take untying it to do it properly, and the kid <laughs> and oh, sneezes. No. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Arm was arm was covered. <laughs> And snots. And snots. It was just, I was like, but I don't do well with stuff like that. Stuff <laughs> like spitting and yeah. snot. So I was gagging. I was like, <laughs> running to talk. <laughs> Luckily, I had Amelia there, yeah. one of the young, young girls at the dojo, assists me in that class and t- helps teach. I was like, oh, you have to work. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, stop. You're making me feel sick. <laughs> I ran to the toilet to wash it off. Oh, but yeah. God. Well, that's always a good one. It's disgusting. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know, you're trying to no. sense it. Un- for the kids, you're, super- you're a superhero, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're unbreakable. You're like, ee, 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 ee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Well, chemical weapons so. are. Yeah. <laughs> And the cool yeah, cool weapons. Weapons. We talked about if only I had night. some sort of defense for it. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Well, interesting that. Yeah. <laughs> I realized just tie the belt and stop messing. That's the, yeah. That's like, stop yeah, messing yeah, about yeah. with the kids. That's your lesson. But, Paolo Sensi, thank you very much. Oh, uh, start to a great weekend. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Looking forward to tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Well. Guys, there you go. You're thank you for the listening. Man, the mystery. The, 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 the legend. There's Paolo Sensi. Oh, 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 Oh